at Halloween in Derry as the veil decays the ancient book of awakening stirs great legends from its pages waken and some are just destined for the eternal sleep tonight these whispering pages weep of I, the Morrigan, as I sweep into the frame. But, my, my dear mortals, you've got me at a bad time. Never in all of the lives I have lived did I ever dream that any mortal would see me like this. Me, the Phantom Queen Morrigan, bringer of fate, destiny, war, death, sovereignty. Look at me now. I am as the carcasses of warriors on which I used to What awesome force, what great power could possibly have done this to me, you wonder? Me? Already I can hear your brains whirring like clockwork, sound out of your senses. But was it a witch or, or some... some some vampire or 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 even a werewolf who finally brought you down, Morrigan. Oh no. I speak of a power far, far greater. Lighter than air, far darker than the underworld, and more mysterious than the other world, and so clandestine, that not even I was prepared. Oh, dear mortals, I speak to you not of death, but of love. The power of my own love for a warrior by the name of Kuholland. Oh, Cahollin. One fateful day, above a battlefield in Ulster, I flew round and round and full of grace. And the warriors, when they saw me above, well, some of them were so filled with fright that they fell down instantly dead. Yet others, when they saw me, their battle-weary bones were revitalized. I was to find the one named Cahollin and offer him my assistance. I spied him below, fighting ten warriors all by himself, and flew down to do the deed. But when I saw him up close, I was undone. So powerful, so brave, so formidable. Into my heart and mind he moved. Why does this warrior Cahollin walk nightly through my dreams? Why have I no longer the appetite to feast on the fallen? Very soon, all I wanted was for him to walk by my side forever. 
So, one day as he rested, said I, Come, come, lie with me and I will restore your strength 100,000 times over and victory will be Ulster's. Many as a warrior have I, the Morrigan, made mine this way. Warrior men are fickle. A woman only needs to whisper sweet promises of battle victory into their ears and... Well... But Cahullin was not like other warriors. For upon opening his eyes and seeing me there, he spat and threw me away from him. Me. The Phantom Queen Morrigan. The arrogance. The lunacy of it. Don't think I don't recognize you, he said. You are the Morrigan, dark woman. And I would have not a slice of sense in my head if I were to give myself to you, for then I would be yours forever. Go away from me, devious witch. Devious witch? I am no mere witch! And you, Cahullin, will learn a sore lesson. Took I then the disgusting form of an eel. And when he tried to cross the river, made I to trip him. To drown would be his fate. But then he punched me. <sighs> Took the wind, took the wind from me. <laughs> what a big, brave man indeed. <laughs> and when my breath returned, I made chase again. This time, my fury was so great that I took on the majestic form of a starving wolf and drove I, a herd of cattle, straight at the warrior Cahullin. But so great, so formidable was Cahullin that he blinded me <sighs> with his famous slingshot. A man is no use without his weapon. I am not too proud to admit, my dear mortals, that with half my sight and half my heart, I began to tire. Slightly. For turned I into a cow then, and once again drove an entire herd straight towards the warrior Cahullin. But this time, this time, he came at me with a boulder right to the leg. Smashed the bones to smithereens. And I was undone. For a moment. What a fool was Cahullin. For returned I to the ford then and sat there washing the blood soaked cloths of the dune. Little old and feeble me. And along he comes. Battle ravaged and exhausted from the chase. And says I, 
Oh, you look parched. Would you like a wee drink? Aye, old timer, said he. And it was then that I knew that he hadn't a clue that it was me, not even with my ribs and my leg and my eye all abandaged. So I gave him a sip. twice, thrice, and each time, well-reared fella as he was, he said, bless you, bless you, bless you, and the fool in blessing me thrice restored me to my full strength. But gave I not chase again. I only said, We will meet one more time before you die. For a long time I nursed my broken heart. Until came the time when I returned to the river to wash, wash, wash. Sure enough came the day when along came Cahullin for the final time. And this time, a sorrier sight never I saw. Beaten and bloodied and at the doorstep of the other world he was. He tied himself to a rock with his own intestines, still in the hope that to see him thus would so terrify his enemies. And I, blind and vain, I could only see an opportunity to finally seek revenge for my sore heart. Crow I became, round and round and full of grace I flew, and landed on his shoulder, and not respecting the power of love, I killed my love, and killed something within myself. And now I sit here, washing and washing. My heart still sore, with no means to mend it now. Now, never ask me to tell that story again. <laughs>